What's up, collectors? Welcome back to Films by Color. I'm DJ, and I've got my lovely wife, Grace, with me today to talk musicals. Today we're talking musicals. We have dubbed May Musical May this year. This is actually your idea. Yeah. So we're going to try to watch as many musicals this month as possible, just like we do in December for Christmas movies and in October for spooky movies. So we are going to devote this month completely to musicals and try to catch up on a lot of musicals that we haven't seen yet. But we're gonna kick off this month with some of our favorite musicals. We're gonna give our top 10 favorite musicals for each of us. Mm -hmm. And we're actually gonna do this draft style because we are husband and wife. So we have a lot of similar tastes and I thought there would be a lot of crossover on this list. And uh, I didn't wanna to have to figure out how we would talk about those in, in the ranking and everything. So we're gonna do it draft style. So we're just gonna okay. go back and forth and we have all of our musicals right off here, off to the side, off camera. We're each gonna pick one, uh, and then whoever picks it first gets it. And all then right. we're gonna go until we get 10. We'll talk about each of our picks briefly, uh, but we do gotta keep this moving because we're gonna be talking about 20 films total, back and forth, and we'll show the posters on the screen so you guys can have a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about. But let's not waste any time. Let's yeah. go ahead and jump right into it. All right, starting with our number, I guess this isn't really a ranking number one, but, uh, you're yeah, gonna you're gonna it's try your to first get first round draft pick. I'm gonna so. try to get my number one. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it's not your number one. It might as be, well. but let's see. Let me grab it over here. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Did, were you gonna pick this? <laughs> it was gonna be my number two. Okay. So this well, is it was okay. my number one. So okay. Okay. I, I that works. It. Jacques Demy's Young Girls of Russia Four. This is, uh, and I feel like Amazing. it was my idea to watch this. I showed it to you, so sure. I think it's okay. Fair, okay. It's fair that I. And get you loved Demy. So. Absolutely incredible movie. We kind of dress like a Jacques Demy film today. Right. So colorful. Uh, so such a feel good movie. It is. Uh, incredible songs. Even though you can't understand what they're saying because they're in mm -hmm. French, uh, you still hum along. Yeah. And like, it's such a good movie. Uh, we've watched it twice now, just to make sure the first time wasn't a fluke <laughs> because we not. both liked it. We gave it five stars the first time. One of the best musicals we've ever seen. Uh, we rewatched it a couple days ago in preparation for this, and it is still amazing. If you haven't seen this, and if you haven't seen any of Jacques Demy's films, his films are great. He has lots of musicals, but this is my favorite from his musicals. Jacques Demy was a big fan of Hollywood musicals, so this was his big chance to work with some Hollywood actors mm -hmm. for this film. He brought in George Shakiris from West Side Story, and also Gene Kelly is mm -hmm. also in this. Always a, shocked me. I yeah. forget, because he shows up later in the movie, and so every time he pops up, I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, you're here. So had to pick this one, mostly because I knew you were gonna steal it <laughs> if I did it, Jerk. but it is uh, my favorite Jacques Demy film, my favorite Jacques Demy musical, and one of the most feel-good movies of all time. Yeah, it's actually in my top four on Letterboxd. I think the only reason I didn't give it number one for musical is just because I can't sing along, and that's such a big part of musicals for me is that I want to be able to sing with them. So I'm determined the... to learn the songs I know, in I French am too. so I can sing along. <laughs> but that one's great. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Uh, let's go ahead with your first pick. All right, my first pick is not going to be a shock to you, I know, um, but... The Sound of Music, um, <laughs> The Hills Are Alive. I grew up with this one. Can't argue with that. This is one that I watched with my grandmother and my mother so much growing up. Julie Andrews was just always a staple in our house. I love every single every single song in this whole movie. Know every word to every song. I uh, want to go to Austria so bad and go to the house and do the whole Sound of Music tour. They have like a tour you can go do, but so that that just had to be my number one. We're gonna go there someday. Oh, yeah. I promise you. One day. But yeah, it's wonderful. That's another five-star movie for yeah. sure. Uh, we just watched that recently too, and mm -hmm. it holds up amazingly. We need a 4K release of that. It's crazy that we yeah. don't have 4K of that. It looked really good though, I will say that. It does look good, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll jump right into my number two pick. Hopefully I don't take another one of yours. One. I just know uh, it. My number two is... <laughs> <laughs> have to get this one once. Just got this release uh, for Christmas. Did mm -hmm. I get this for Christmas? Yeah. Beautiful release. You got this for me. Yes. Wonderful lenticular from We E.T. Collection. I don't, I don't think I've done a video on this, but it's an incredible release and one of my favorite movies. I remember liking it a while ago. We watched it years ago and mm -hmm. I liked it a lot, but this last time we rewatched it, I absolutely so loved it and I fell in love with it and I couldn't stop listening to the soundtrack for weeks. Weeks and weeks I was listening to the soundtrack. Uh, such a good movie. Uh, if you haven't seen Once, highly recommend it. It is kind of a very low budget film. I, I describe it as Eric Romer the musical because it's kind okay. of like an Eric yeah. Romer film. Or if you like uh, Linklater's Before Trilogy, it's mm -hmm. very similar to that. It's just two uh, people in Ireland who meet up. It's in Dublin, right? Yes. 
and they meet and uh, it's just kind of their relationship really forming, their friendship forming, and they're just kind of hanging out and they end up making a record together. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both musicians and it's just a real slow, like- It's, it's very super true to John Carney too. Yeah. Like, it, if you it, like John Carney films, yeah. if you love Sing Street, if you like uh, Floor and Son, which just mm -hmm. came out, which is another great one. Lots of just realistic comedy. I feel like there's a lot of improv that mm -hmm. comes out. Very and dry they're, yeah, they're just yeah. uh, really charming together. Uh, wonderful little- Great chemistry. Kind of love story, but mostly just about uh, finding yourself coming of age. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are able to uh, help each other uh, on their own little journey. So. Really great, funny. great movie. Once had to get it in my top 10. Sorry. You stole another one of mine, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It was higher up on your list, so I guess that's fair. Yeah, it was my, that was my number two. Okay. So. All right. My number two now is La La Land. Oh, I know. Go. And this one that's kind super of high. shocked me. I know. Well, it was originally number three. You stole one of mine. Oh, sorry. Um, but I rewatched this recently. I'd been seeing like a lot of little videos on Instagram and TikTok about it. I was like, I really need to just go back and watch that again. Mm -hmm. And it, I had a different experience with it than I did the first time. I think the first time I saw it is like a really sad film and don't get me wrong, it is sad. But to me, it's more of like a story of people helping each other along their way and like Kinda getting like them, yeah, getting them to where they're, they need to be. It's not, it's not like super depressing for me. It's like a good sad. Um, I don't know. I, I got a lot more out of it the second time. And obviously the music is wonderful. The acting is wonderful. Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling are freaking treasurer. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it made it pretty high up on the list. It, it snuck up there. I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be that high, but I, I can't deny it. I love La La Land. <laughs> Inspired strongly by Young Girls of Rushfort. Yeah. So if you like either so you one didn't, of those, watch the other. So you didn't get Young Girls, but you got La La Land. Yeah, there so you go. You're good. <laughs> this one, I know I'm definitely not stealing from you because uh, I don't think this one's gonna make your top 10, but it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's one of our daughter's favorite movies and we watch it all the time. Aww. It's Wizard of Oz. There it is. One of the best musicals ever, 1939. Yeah. I don't have to say anything about Wizard of Oz. Everybody knows Wizard of Oz. This is actually one that I didn't grow up with. I That's never so saw it until I was an adult. I saw like bits and pieces of Your it. Your mom loves that movie though. That's so weird that you did uh, it. It's like an inside joke with her and her sisters that they call each other the witches, but <laughs> they don't, she doesn't, to actually like it. She oh. was actually terrified of it as a kid because the flying monkeys terrified her. That same, same. But yeah, I didn't see this till I was an adult and for the first time as an adult, it like turned me into a kid again. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I wish I had grown up with this because it was beautiful and uh, so funny. I love the lion. That's my favorite part. Uh, his his song that he sings about courage. But yes, Wizard of Oz, incredible. I, I have, have got to get the 4K version of this film. I don't have the 4K. This is all I have. We haven't watched this recently, but I, like I said, I've watched it. <laughs> what do you mean by recently? We watch it like every month with that one. <laughs> yeah, our daughter loves to watch this. So I've seen it a bunch and it is coming to a theater near us pretty oh, soon. That's cool. So I might take her to see it in the theater, but she Wizard of Oz had to be in my top five and it's in my top three. Okay, my next one is definitely my biggest guilty pleasure on the list, but I I, I have no shame about it at all because- it's, like it's not guilty. There's no movie that makes me quite as happy as this movie <laughs> and I am I will get hate for this probably and I don't care. No. Uh, the sequel, Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, just, just gold. It's wonderful. It's ABBA, it's uh, Lily James, it's Pierce Brosnan, it's, I mean, Meryl Streep is in it. Like, it's gold. It's just absolutely wonderful. And we also watched it for the first time when I was pregnant with our son, who is my first kid. And she is pregnant in the movie. Spoiler alert, slightly, but not really. I just really related to it. And I don't think I've weeped that hard in a theater in like a really long time. And I still cry every single time I watch this movie. You um, do. It gets you every time. It gets me every single time. I'm like, it's not going to cry this time. And It's I not even just like a tear. It's like weeping. <laughs> Because you watched it in the hospital bed when I did. That's right. You, when you I had Alan, it. that was when. So when I was pregnant with my daughter, the second baby, um, I was watching this in the hospital while DJ went to get some food down in the cafeteria. <laughs> and you came back and you were just a and, mess. <laughs> well, also my contractions started, <laughs> and I was watching this. I was like, it's so good. <laughs> The nurse came in. She was like, I think you're going to have to stop watching your movie now. <laughs> so it's always going to have a special place in my heart. Um, I, and I sing along the entire time with yeah. a smile on my face. Well, it's a great soundtrack because it's ABBA. So it's yeah. kind of a cheat code. But as long as you pick this one, it's way, first, yeah. way better than the first the one. sequel far surpasses <laughs> the first one. And I don't hate Mamma Mia. Like, I love the stage play. I don't think that would have made my top 10, but I absolutely love it. Yeah. I love it a lot. A lot especially watch. watching with you. It's great. All right, my number four, I'm gonna have to just talk about because 
I don't have a copy oh, of it because it there's is, <laughs> no physical copy of it. It makes me so mad. Netflix, you need to put out a physical copy of this movie. I think he was nominated for best actor for this movie. Yeah, he was. Tick, tick, boom is my number four. Tick, so tick, great. boom, like blew up my world when it came out. I saw it on the year that I turned 30. And it's all, if you haven't seen it, it's, that's a weird thing to say. But if you haven't seen it, it's <laughs> it's like days before his birthday when he finally is about to turn 30. It's all about like legacy and time running out and trying to you know pursue your dreams the right way and not giving up on them. Mm-hmm. And he feels like he hasn't accomplished anything and he's about to turn 30 and it just totally wrecked me. We watched it right before my 30th birthday mm-hmm. and I've watched it like three or four times since then. I really need to get a physical copy. I'm gonna have to buy like a bootleg or something because yeah. I don't have Netflix and I don't want to support Netflix. <laughs> but I really, really love this movie. It's one of the few musicals that I love every single song on it's the great. soundtrack yeah. and I listen to the soundtrack all the time. Uh, I actually, a lot of times if I'm trying to shoot a video and I don't have my energy up and I, I feel like I need to boost my energy before I do a video or before I do a live stream on the channel. I'll just play 3090, which is the first song on the soundtrack of Tick Tick Boom, just to and just sing it at the top of my lungs <laughs> to, of- to boost me up and just get me the energy to make a video because it's such a good song. I can never listen to it enough. One of our favorite things to do is try to sing the therapy song together. Oh yeah, um, another great song. It never can do it. Can't sing it fast <laughs> enough, but man, yeah. is it fun to try. You get tongue tied. <laughs> Every, every single, single time, time. But, but it's so fun. Yeah, I highly recommend it. It is about uh, John Larson, the cre- the writer uh, of the Rent. musical Rent. And we don't have a good uh, version of Rent in film, unfortunately. unfortunately. But this is great. It's the first directorial debut of Lin-Manuel Miranda. I highly recommend Tick, Tick, Boom. I've talked about it many times on the channel, but it's one of my favorites. So that is my number four. My next one is another one that I grew up watching a lot with my movie. mother and grandmother. <gasps> no! My Fair Lady. Um, I adore this movie. It, I, I had a weird childhood. Like, I didn't watch <laughs> a lot of Disney movies. I watched a lot of, like, old musicals. Long um, musicals, with, too. This and Sound of Music are both over three yeah, hours. And just, like, Audrey Hepburn movies in general. Like, I loved Sabrina as well. Um, I watched that a lot as a kid. So I love Audrey Hepburn and Rex Harrison, even though he's terrible in this. He's like the guy that you love to hate. Um, and it's just such a charming story. Like Audrey Hepburn is so charming the whole time. It makes me laugh it's funny. so it's so hard. funny. Like there's no other musical I think that makes me laugh as hard as this one. And <laughs> it, the, the songs are great. Her singing in her like hackney accent at the beginning. All I want is a room somewhere. Like love it. Just love it. I can't, yeah. That's another one I didn't see until I was an adult. You introduced me to that one. Mm -hmm. And I love it too. If you are a big grammar nerd like (laughs) me, uh, or English nerd, that was my favorite subject growing up in school. And uh, that's all you had to tell me to sell me on the movie. You should have told me that that. from the very beginning because I would have watched it and it's so good. The reason it's about grammar is because it's about her. She's like a um, homeless person basically. And there's this British like- Rex Harrison is a linguist. Yeah, Yeah. he's he makes a deal with her that he can turn her into a lady in like a couple Pass her weeks. Off, yeah. and, and no one will be able to tell the difference. I think it's really charming. And the 4K transfer on this is one of so the, good. the oh best, my it is the best 4K transfer I've ever seen. It looked incredible. I was so surprised. It looked like it was shot yesterday. It was beautiful. Instead of in 1950, what is it? 1964. That's crazy. So. You stole that one for me. That definitely would have made my top 10. I'm oh, sorry. Well, so, you've stolen two for me. I will so. have to move on to another pick here. Let's see. Oh, I know where I'm going to go next. This one might be higher someday, but I've only seen it once. Oh, okay. It is Meet Me in St. Louis, a wonderful movie. One of the best Christmas movies of all time. Uh, if you count it as a Christmas if you movie. Count it as one. It's not just a Christmas movie, but it ends on Christmas. And I'll fight you with all, I'll it's fight you on this all the time. It's a full year movie. But it ends on Christmas and it's where that song came from. I know. One of the most played Christmas songs of all time comes from this movie. So it counts as a Christmas movie. But Would it's you also consider Holiday in a Christmas movie? Uh, it, uh you can no. count it. You can count it. <laughs> it's got white Christmas in it. Anyway, Meet Me in St. Louis uh, is a wonderful movie. It stars Judy Garland. It is uh, definitely a musical, very mm-hmm. catchy songs, but one of the most beautiful, like heart-wrenching stories and one of the best characters like of all time. Yeah. She is incredible. Like I said, this might be a top three at some point, 
but uh, I've only seen it once. I really wanted to watch it before we did this video. I wanted to watch it around Christmas time, but I just didn't get a chance to because we were watching so many other things. But uh, can't go wrong with Meet Me in St. Louis. Yeah, I think this one will definitely enter my top 10 eventually as well. But like you, I've only seen it once. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't love it quite as much as you, but I do think it has all the sauce to eventually end up on my top 10. I just need to watch it a couple more times. And this is also a beautiful Digibook yeah, release really from Warner Brothers. And I'll say one last thing about this is my family does not watch classic movies. They only watch new movies. They have no desire to watch anything that came out before they were born. But my mom, dad, and brothers were over here for Christmas mm -hmm. two years ago, and I had this on, and they sat and watched the whole thing. That's true. And they were just this transfixed is so good. because it's such a good movie. So if you haven't seen it, maybe in St. Louis. Hopefully you've seen it at this point. Oh, <laughs> you. That's fair, that's fair. We just watched this again last night. Last night. Um, I rewatched this one because like I mentioned at the beginning, joy is like a big part of musicals for me. So I was like, I don't remember if I love Les Mis as much as I think I did. I rated it like four or five stars on Letterboxd. And I was like, I don't, I just don't remember why I did that. Um, and I rewatched it and I remember why I did it because <laughs> yeah. it is just so good. Like the acting is impeccable. Of course, the songs are amazing. DJ and I frequently sing One Day More in the car together at All top time. volume just on a regular day. It's so good. Like I had tears just like streaming down my face at the end of this movie. And I knew I remembered everything that happened and it still just like gets me in the gut every time. Um, it's, it's just so, so beautiful. And it makes me want to like go see the Broadway play and the original, like I want to watch the original with you, even though you said it's like, what, four? 4.6 hours. There's like from the 19th, there's a 1930s version, but I don't think that's a musical though. Oh, well, never mind. I don't care. <laughs> I need the music. The music is important. Yeah, this is one that I watched really early too, back in college, and I had no, I couldn't remember if I liked it either. So I'm glad we rewatched it before we did this video. But it definitely would have made my top ten. I love it. I know it's kind of divisive. I know some people don't like the singing every single word kind of opera that it is. It's so it's, cool. This to is the first that. one on our list that is that. It's yeah. not just a musical. Like they sing every single word, but uh, I love it. And after it is a little jarring at the beginning, but after a while you get totally on the same wavelength and it, I, I don't even think about it anymore. It's yeah, DJ really... and I took a break and we were just like talking to each other and yes. sing song when we went to go get some snacks. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, and this is a beautiful release too. This is not boutique or anything. It's just a standard release, but it has this little window and it has the case in there obviously, but it comes with a full booklet which is pretty thick with all the kind of chapters and information about the movie and it comes with these little cards. Oh, you gotta change out the cards. No, I like, he's the, he's the main character. But who he else makes do sense. they have? Marius? Do they have young Cosette? Uh, yes, yeah, she's on this oh, one. Oh, see, that would be a good one too. But that's the main cover oh, of everything true. else. So I was I was mixing it up, uh, but you can put uh, the original, whichever one you want on the front there and kind of that's customize really cool. it, which is really cool. I've never even seen a boutique label they do should, that. They should do that more. The only I thing is I, I wish this was a little less flimsy. It's kind of just a flimsy cardboard yeah. thing. But highly recommend Les Mis. If you kind of heard people talking negatively about it and you didn't check it out because of give that, I would give it a try. Uh, and it's not as long as I thought. It's not three hours. Yeah, it's under three hours. Sound of Music and My Fair Lady are much longer. I think so. it could actually have a little more breathing room. I think it's really fast paced. It does. Kind of, there's they, like no establishing shots or downtime. They don't have time. It just keeps <laughs> jumping from scene to scene. So I think it could stand to be a little longer, but uh, I like it quite a bit. What's the director? Todd Hooper? Tom Hooper. That's what his name is. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the director of this. He also did King's Speech, which I liked a lot when it came out. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen it since though, so I can't vouch for it. But I think this one holds up uh, and it's one of my favorites. But it's not on my list. It's on your list. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I am going to go with one of my personal favorites. Some people would think this is a guilty pleasure. I feel no guilt about it whatsoever. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And I probably should have picked it as my number four. I don't know why I waited this long. This definitely should have been before uh, Tick, Tick, Boom and Meet Me in St. Louis. Really? Probably. Really? I don't know. I love it so much. I don't care what everyone else says. No one else likes this movie but me. I like it. But uh, it's into the freaking woods. Into the woods is amazing. <laughs> uh, this movie is perfect. And I, I will not hear any other slander about it because uh, I love it. I mean, everyone knows me on this channel. I love fairy tales and the way that this, and it's Sondheim, it's not this mm -hmm. movie, like they're just doing what he did, but the way he weaves them all together uh, perfectly and the way he uses them as modern metaphors, taking them like kind of out of their context originally and using them as modern metaphors for mm -hmm. parenting. This is another one, like Mamma Mia, where I saw, well, I, it came out in 2016, but oh, okay. I watched it a couple years later 
when we had our first kid mm-hmm. and good grief it wrecked me i was i was i was crying too i was weeping uh love this movie it's got a great cast Such it's got the kid from les mis so it's funny that these kind of lined up there together there are giants in the sky he is perfect he's he is great I, I, everyone in here is great i love that it is uh, not disney-fied they could have because mm-hmm. it was produced by disney they could have disney-fied it but they did not they used the actual grimm's fairy tales from like Grimm's Fairy Tales, where you've got uh, people getting their eyes pecked out by birds. You've got the sisters actually cutting off parts of their foot to fit it into the shoe. You've got uh, all the gruesome stuff, people flying into the thorns and being blind. All the stuff straight from the fairy tales. <laughs> it's not the Disney versions. It's actually the real versions that Sondheim pulled from. And uh, I love it. It, yeah. works, it works so well for I, me. I, that probably would have been on my top 10. I didn't even put it on mine because I knew it was going to be on yours. So I didn't even like take the time to try to grab that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I, I also love it. I don't know. I think the reason people don't like it is because it's different from the musical. I've never seen the musical. I not tried to either. watch it one time on YouTube. I couldn't get into it. I'm not a stage musical guy. I need the cinematography and I need it to be cinematic. Yeah. I can't I can't watch stage musicals. I didn't, I grow, like stage I didn't musicals, grow up with stage but... musicals. But I love Into the Woods. Sorry if that bothers you, <laughs> but that <laughs> had to be on my list. It's a very personal movie for me. Okay, are you ready for my next one? Uh, I think so. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know if this is on your list or not, so sorry if it is. Ooh, I love that one, but I don't think it made my list. Okay, good. All the movies are falling over. White Christmas. And some people might argue that this isn't a musical <clears throat> because they're like singing in a play or a production the whole time. And I can see that. But then you have like snow when they're singing. Yeah, the it's train. definitely a musical. There's lots of musicals that are about putting on and a musical. I think this is one that like, if you take a step back <clears throat> and you don't have the nostalgia that I have, attached to it then it it's probably not like the greatest movie but i have so much nostalgia for this like it just reminds me of christmas time i watch it every single watch it every single year it's another one that makes me tear up every single time i watch it dancing that's a musical yeah okay you're not not performing you're right it's it's 100 a musical it's definitely a musical forget everything I said. it's amazing (laughs) watch white christmas you mentioned holiday in late earlier Way better than Holiday Inn. It, way better. It, this is another, like, it's not a sequel, but, like, another follow-up that did way better than the original. Yeah, and I just, I, I just adore, it. like, um, Rosemary Clooney and Bing Crosby's relationship. Uh, everything is just... Danny like, Kaye. Danny, Danny Kaye's Kaye hilarious. Danny hilarious. It's so good. And I know some people don't have the love that we do for this, but it always is going to have a special place in my heart, so... It yeah. had to make my life. Christmas movies have a have a, have a pat like have a cheat yeah. code because we watch them every single year. So we've That's seen fair. that more than anything on this list probably. I don't know if that would have made the cut. It might have since you stole My Fair Lady and Les Mis. It yeah, probably would have. But sorry. That's fine. That's why we're doing it like this. It's a little more interesting. <laughs> we get to talk about more movies. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'll grab another one here. What am I going to grab? Okay, to oh no, I don't have to. Look at no, anything. I know here we what go. We're gonna grab. Oompa, ah. oompa. There it is. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. One of my childhood favorites. I love this movie. I have it three times back there. I have the digi book up there in the gold section. I have the big box set back there in the purple section that's always behind me. But this is the 4K edition, uh, which looks incredible. I love this. Uh, they put this out. The restoration itself is great, but we finally got the framing fixed. From oh, yeah, they, you they told were me using, about that. Ever since the, bl- the first Blu-ray, or maybe even the DVD, they like had the framing was off, and uh, they finally fixed it, and the, the uh, cinematography looks so much better in this version, uh, and the restoration looks great. One of my absolute favorites, I grew up watching this movie, and I still watch it to this day. This is another one of our daughter's favorites. She watches this one with me, too. She says, uh, what does she call it? I want to watch Oopa Loopa Doopity Doo. Mm-hmm. That's what she thinks it's called. Uh, and I'm so, fine with that. <laughs> so I watch this movie all the time. It's one that I can just put in anytime and I'll be fine. Uh, the songs are great. Obviously, the Oompa Loompa songs are kind of whatever, but uh, Pure Imagination and Candyman are pff, two of the best what? songs. Not Cheer Up Charlie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't want to talk about that. I don't hate it as much as some people do. It's fine. But uh, Candyman and Pure Imagination are some of the best songs ever. That's True. the best opening to a movie ever. Uh, wonderful, wonderful movie. I don't need to say anything else. It's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Everybody knows what that is. Uh, and don't see Wonka. <laughs> Just no. kidding. Some people like it. We didn't like it. I did not. I feel like people probably would normally have this a lot higher on their list and that's great. But it's one that I, again, grew up with watching with my grandmother and mother and singing all the time. It's one that I know every single word to every single song. Um, And I will always adore it as well. West Side Story. There it is. The the Ridge. Um, I just love it so, so much. I feel pretty like jets and sharks, like everything about this movie is so great. And it's another one that I forget how much I 
love it until I rewatch it. And mm -hmm. it just like gives me full body chills every time they sing and harmonize together. And I can't get enough of it. That's the one that you showed me. It's another one that you showed me for the first mm -hmm. time when we were dating. Yeah. Uh, I'd never seen it and it's it's awesome. And my brother was actually a, a shark back in the day in a high school production of this. And when they were doing the rumble, he fell off the stage into the <laughs> orchestra pit. <laughs> And it was one of the moments in our family that we talk about very frequently and we always make fun of him for. So that also just and, has a special tie. And Russ Tamlin is just one of the coolest guys in film history in that movie. He's so good. All right, jump into our final three. I'm going to have to start doubling up on directors here. I wasn't planning on doing this, but since you took a few of mine, I'm going to have to do that. We, we, we should say here also that we are keeping this just a live action. We didn't really know how to balance it. And one animated movie might have made my list, but I didn't want it to be so lopsided. So we're going to leave it to live action and then leave the door open to maybe do an animated top 10 somewhere down the line. Yeah. But my next one is another one from the same director. It's another Jacques Demy film. It's also in the Criterion box set. It's Donkey Skin, another one starring Catherine Deneuve, which yes, is, she's amazing in everything that we've seen her in. She's great in this as well. This is based on a fairy tale by Charles Perrault, who is a French writer who also wrote Cinderella mm -hmm. and a couple other big ones. This is one I had not heard of. I don't know. I don't think this, like we don't hear this one when we're growing up as kids. It's a little weird, uh, probably for a good reason, uh -huh. but Jacques Demy uh, does an amazing job. It's just exquisite. All of the production design is amazing. The songs are great. Like we said, the cast is really mm -hmm. good. Another very colorful film. He brings him, back, what's his name? Uh, Jean Moray, who plays the beast in the original Jean Cocteau, Beauty and the oh, Beast. Oh, I didn't know he that. He brings him back in this and he plays the father of what? Catherine Deneuve That's cool. uh, because he was such a big fan of that. And he also, this is also very uh, indicative of that original Beauty and the Beast. There's a lot of references to it. There's a lot of like birds everywhere in that movie. And he also brings back a ton of, there's just birds and animals all over the place, which makes it feel like a fairy tale. Uh, another great Jacques Demy film. Probably wouldn't have made my top 10 if you hadn't stolen a few. So I'm glad you did because I get to talk about it. Uh, really, really like this one. This is the first Jacques Demy film I ever saw. Uh, I saw it on the Criterion channel and it made me want to buy this box set. So can't recommend that one enough. If you at all are interested in uh, kind of fairy tale filmmaking, Donkey Skin is one of the greats. My number eight is an another one that I watched with my mom and grandmother a lot growing up. So it's a classic to me, Oklahoma. Another one that I just adore all of the music in. Sorry with the fringe on top. Oh, what a beautiful morning. That's another one we sing frequently. I sing it on the way to school with the kids all the time. Uh, Kansas City. Is Kansas, also great. Yeah. Oh, we got trouble <laughs> right here in Kansas City. Yeah. That's that's one that, that's another one you introduced me to, and mm -hmm. I have only seen it once, but it might have made my list had I seen it more. I love it. It's another funny one. It's another like, really long one. Those yeah. Rogers and Hammerstein um, ones are super long. You've got two of them on your list, Sound of Music and Yeah, and it, but it's so good. It's and you don't feel like to me. I don't feel the length of these. Like it, it is long. The only time I feel the length is the extended ballet sequence with no hey! song. But you know, I'm just kin is is. Oh, that's true. Is inspired by that. But that's a song. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. But it's it's a whole dance about her freaking out that he's going to take her I, I, Like I, I said, wanna, I've I only seen it once. Things. I've only seen it once. It's fantastic. And it's beautiful scenery, obviously. Oklahoma, just in the middle of the plains. Oh, yes. And it was like one of the first films to be shot in CinemaScope. Oh, really? Something. Like there's a, it's, a, it's an aspect ratio. It's like super wide and epic. Uh, we need to watch it downstairs in the theater. We haven't watched it yet down there. I told my mom when I was little that I wanted to marry a cowboy named Curly. So, I mean, obviously. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you're not a cowboy and you're definitely not named Curly. <laughs> but I love you anyway. <laughs> uh, my number nine. Like I said, I'm going to have to double up on directors here. I This oh, I know it's was coming. not going to be on my list. I wasn't going to put it because I already have a John Carney film. But, uh, and I do prefer once, I think, after watching him a second time. But Sing Street it's a great is one. a great movie. Everybody loves Sing Street. Everybody went crazy for this movie when it came out. Really, really good. It is kind of a soft musical, uh, kind of like you said with White Christmas, where they're mostly just singing songs and making music videos. There's there's one scene where they like break out mm -hmm. into songs and there's like a whole dream sequence type thing, but mostly they're just kind of performing for a band. Another uh, John Carney movie. John Carney, it's John Carney, yeah. yeah. I almost said Matt Carney. John Carney uh, kind of remakes the same movie mm -hmm. each time. Well, this is very similar to once where it's like a boy meets a girl and uh, they're basically we're just documenting this yeah. time of their life. But it's more adolescent. They're, yeah, they're not really about the romance. They're much more about uh, coming of age stories. This is very similar to Once. I don't want to give too much away in case you haven't seen it, but uh, it's about a little boy who wants to uh, start a band and uh, he uh, 
mainly does it because he meets a, a girl who yeah. is uh, struggling with her own the riddle of the model. problems. Yes, yeah. that's a great song. My favorite song is Up. I think everyone okay. else's favorite song is Drive It Like You Stole It. No, I think Up is my favorite. Another too. really good one. I know, but I think Drive It Like You Stole It was the one that people wanted to get to win best oh. song that year. But I really like Up. Up's my personal favorite. And uh, that's Sing Street. And this is a very cool release from Korea that Grace got me for Christmas one, the year that it came out. And uh, yeah. I can't, uh, I can't say enough good things about Sing Street. That is my second John Carney movie on the list. Uh, what is your penultimate musical? Right, so I gotta figure it out since you stole some from me. I think the next one I'm gonna go with is another nostalgia pick for me. And I almost forgot about this when we were looking through the shelves and pulling all our musicals down. I saw it and I couldn't believe that <laughs> this didn't make my list or wasn't even a thought in my mind because I used to beg to watch it like every single day of my life growing up and it is Annie. I don't know anything about like how this was critically received. It just has a very special place in my heart. Um, actually, my brothers when I was growing up, fun story. <laughs> my gr brothers when I was growing up uh, convinced me that I was an orphan that my <laughs> parents found in the woods and that I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk to them about it because they would be upset that my brothers told me. So till I was about eight, I believed that I was like little orphan Annie. So you really connected with <laughs> this So movie. I really connected with it. <laughs> Um, and I used to watch it all the time. Sun will come out tomorrow. Like, uh, oh, it's it's so cute and sweet. And the little dog, Sandy. Um, <laughs> I just love it so much. It It's just one of those that like brings joy. Like, I don't know how actually good it is, but it just makes it's me really, classic. yeah, it just makes it. me really, really happy to watch it. Um, and also like her, not the nanny, but I think she's like the personal assistant to Daddy Warbucks. Her name is Grace. And so I was always like, ooh, a famous person named Grace. <laughs> I liked that too. So she'll sing and dance her way into your heart. That, that's pretty much and what happened. And it says in this original movie classic. So yeah. there you go. It says yeah. it right on the box. You can't there disagree you with it. Can't. Can you show me that one? Uh, it probably wouldn't have made my list. <laughs> But, I don't think it will for anyone that didn't grow up with it, I did. but that's fine. I enjoyed watching it with you. Uh, no one likes my 10th pick either. This uh, is, uh, I'm, I'm glad you took some of mine because this is going to make my list and it probably wouldn't have otherwise. This is another one I grew up watching with my parents, mm -hmm. uh, which is weird because I had never seen any of the cartoons or the theatrical shorts that this is based on. Oh, it was really? just never in my childhood. But I guess my parents just like Robin Williams, maybe? I don't know why we rented this a couple times growing Spoiler. up. Spoiler. But it, you know it is, is Robert Altman's Popeye. <laughs> I forgot it's Robert Altman. Robert I completely Altman. forgot. So, crazy, so many crazy things about this. Yeah. First of all, Robin Williams is amazing as Popeye. He, he does an amazing impression. He keeps his eye closed the whole movie. Uh, he's so good at uh, playing Popeye. Uh, Shelley Duvall is a flawless olive oil. She's Very incredible. Good. The casting is amazing. It's Robert Altman. So the, the cinematography is beautiful. Yeah, the the whole set and like, of the town is crazy. The, the dichotomy between Altman's like supernaturalistic filmmaking with the most over the top best example of a live action cartoon I've ever seen. Like this is the best example. You've got like The Mask and other live action cartoons Not that that use animation. This no. doesn't use any animation. It is all live action, but they go so the, the detail they go to to like bring all these weird gags to life, like all of the stuff, like all the slapstick and everything. And now that I'm an adult, I actually have a huge affinity for the theatrical shorts because I started watching them with our son he when he them. was young. And now our younger daughter loves them as well. I've got all of the theatrical shorts back there on DVD. I wish they had a Blu-ray, but they don't. So we watch those shorts all the time. So I finally showed them this for the first time this year because they know these characters so well. Love this movie. Uh, the, the songs are so catchy. The They built like this giant seat, like the yeah, set, the whole city is a set. It's basically like a play, but it's just this massive set that is the entire town, this little small town that this takes place in. So many references to the show. Highly recommend Popeye. If you haven't seen it, some people may have missed it. It's all it's a it's an 80s movie. So uh, if you're born after 1980 and you haven't gone back to this yet, I highly recommend it. Uh, maybe watch some of the shorts beforehand so you get some of the references. But Popeye's so much fun, and uh, it just made it on my top there 10 you go. because we did it this draft style. So this is a lot of fun. Let's see what your last pick is. Okay, I think my last pick again. I'm picking from my bench, but I believe that I'm gonna have to go with this. Oh, there we go. New Age musical. 
and it's Hairspray. Uh, it's another one that I just find so much joy watching. Again, I don't know like what the critics reception to this was at all, I but- I think it might be polarizing. I think yeah, some people like I think it. some people love it, some people hate it. It's just so fun to watch. It's like so energetic and so colorful and all the songs are great and super catchy. The cast is great. Like Amanda Bynes back when we had her. Zac Efron? Zac Efron, yeah, and Britney Snow and James Marsden, like Michelle, Marsden's is it Michelle great. Pfeiffer? Is that who it is? Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's an amazing cast. And it, if you haven't seen it, I would definitely give it a watch. But I, I, I think I agree with you. It was kind of polarizing when it came out. Um, and I don't know how true it is to source material either. I didn't, I've never seen the original stage play. Uh, and I know that's some people's like favorite stage Well, I haven't play. seen the original 80s movie, have yeah. you? No, I haven't. So I don't I don't. So we know. need to watch that one as well. It's a really cool release. And oh, we, we completely forgot to mention that it has John Travolta being a woman in it. Too, yeah. So, so <laughs> if that sounds appealing to you. Uh, and you married go. to Christopher Walken. So. <laughs> but yeah, we just mentioned we hadn't seen the original 1981. Yeah. That's kind of why we're doing this month. We love musicals. I always say I love musicals, but I have not seen enough, especially classic musicals. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to use this month to watch watch as many movies as we can and stay tuned for a part two of this video where we talk about all the movies we're going to try to get to this month and uh, give you a sneak peek heads up at our list that we're trying to watch and you can give us feedback on ones that you would like to add to the list or maybe ones that you think we should bump up to the top of the list and make sure we get to. We'd love your feedback on that. But that is our draft. That is all 10 of each of our picks. We made it through 20 musicals, 10 of my favorites, 10 of your favorites, and a lot of crossover there in between. We will be making our individual actual top 10 lists public on our letterbox account so go follow us over there if you are not following us already i'm dj martinez the third and you are grace martinez all one word yep. we love talking to you guys over there and we love making lists and this yep. was actually your idea to do this video and to do the entire month of may as musical may so i know you already have your list yes. posted i need to go ahead and make my list i'll have it posted before i post this video so hopefully we see you guys over there on letterbox but thank you guys so much for watching this was a lot of fun to do fun. we might do draft style moving forward because it was uh, i don't know it was fun to yeah. get to talk about more movies i'm sure we could even have some honorable mentions we have a ton of stuff still oh, yeah. over do we there. want to talk about uh, I think we're good. We talked about enough, okay. probably. I was going to talk about Umbrellas of Cherbourg, uh, Singing in the Rain, obviously, uh, The Magic Flute, which is another Criterion mm -hmm. release. So I'll throw out those three. You want to throw out three? Yeah, uh, Flora and Son, another John Carney, Great uh, Burlesque, um, and favorites. maybe Across the Universe would oh. be my next top three. There you go. Yep. So there's a few more of our favorites. Let us know in the comments what your favorite musicals are. And uh, if we haven't seen them yet, maybe we'll add them to the list for this month. Uh, let us know what you think of our list as well. Thank you so much for coming up with this idea for this video. Sure. Had a lot of fun doing it with you. I had hope you guys... your channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're taking over my channel for this whole month, uh, pretty much. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. Like I said, we'll talk to you down there in the comments section. Hit the subscribe button if you love physical media. Looking forward to shooting more videos with you this month. But until next time, keep collecting, and we'll be back again with another video real soon.